Welcome to the weekly Avalanche Safety Report. I am here as always with Brian Lazar from the CAIC. Good morning, Brian. How are you today? I'm doing well. Thanks, Alan. Thanks for having us back. Absolutely. It snowed a bit here this uh, previous week and, you know, first part of this week, and it's been really windy. How does that translate to our conditions that we're currently seeing? Yeah, you kind of hit on the two key points there. Some fresh snow and a bunch of wind is what's driving the avalanche danger. So you can see we've got, you know, a good portion of the central and northern mountains here that are sitting at moderate danger. As high pressure builds the latter part of the work week, avalanche danger will ease, but we're likely to hold on to some areas of moderate danger. And it's all because of that wind drifted snow like we talked about. So here's some examples of what wind drifted snow looks like when you're out in the field. And this is a really good indication that slabs are forming. And those slabs are the stiff snow that when you walk on them, if it fails, kind of produce these kind of cracks that are shooting out from your snowshoes, your snowmobile, your skis. If the snow gets really stiff, it can produce some pretty prominent and eye-popping cracks. Um, because our wind has been out of the west and southwest for most of the work week after that uh, midweek storm, we're loading these northerly and east facing slopes. And as this avalanche row shows you, that's where almost all of the avalanche activity has been confined to in the last week. And again, the avalanches are starting to grow slowly in size as we continue to add little bits of snow and uh, wind drifting every week. And when we're starting to see avalanches fail, you can see that they're failing in this wind drifted snow in many places. The more worrisome sign is that in some parts of the state, we're starting to see the more recently wind drifted snow being triggered remotely, or people are triggering avalanches from a distance. So here's an example up near Fremont Pass. So this is something we're really going to want to keep an eye on, particularly as we add more snowfall, um, likely coming this weekend. And so you can see here, what we're warning about are these higher elevation alpine slopes with obvious signs of wind drifting. And these are the kinds of avalanches that are driving the moderate danger in those areas. Well, and I think you just touched on it with what's coming ahead, but, you know, I think we're in our final quote unquote mud season temperatures. I think from here on out, it's going to be a lot colder and everything's going to start to stick. So what does the weekend look like? Yeah, I mean, so we had a pretty cold bout on the tail end of that storm, you know, as we move through Wednesday, gradual warming trend into the latter part of the work week but we do have snow returning on the horizon. And so as this uh, animation of modeled snowfall shows, you can see that starting late on Saturday and into Sunday, we start to pile up snow again. And by the time we get to Tuesday afternoon, you know, we're looking at one to two feet of new snow in those favored locations. And this is gonna increase the avalanche danger. So make sure you stay up to date on your current avalanche forecast at colorado.gov slash avalanche. Well, that's my line, Brian. <laughs> Thank you, as always. Uh, valuable, valuable information. I hope folks tune in and pay heed. And you can always stay up to date with the latest forecast at colorado.gov avalanche. Enjoy the backcountry and be sure to stay safe and stay alert.